This is a video for a battery replacement on a 2013 uh, Sprinter van 2500 V6. Uh, we're replacing the battery. The old battery died. Uh, it's uh, beginning of 2018, spring of 2018 now. So I guess that the battery is five to six years old, probably six years since manufacturing. So it died. Uh, we got the original battery right over here. Let's see, authentic original OEM battery. Um, good things to know about the battery. From what I've read online is that they require a 1700 peak crank amp. Uh, and so the replacement battery, when well, I was getting a replacement, because they wanted $200 for a Mercedes-Benz battery, and then another 200 to do the install. I felt that was a little excessive. Uh, so I went off and Home Depot had the right size and shape battery and you know looked it up in the catalog and all that kind of stuff. And uh, they had one for, I think it was like 120 bucks, and then they were willing to give me 10% off, something like that. So basically for, walked out the door and there's a replacement fee charge. So for $120, I got a new battery and replacing a battery is not that difficult. Uh, I'd consider it relatively easy as far as car maintenance goes. A little bit trickier on a Sprinter, but still not difficult. So I wound up by buying this battery, which is an Exide, uh, which is probably not as good a quality as the Mercedes-Benz, but it's the right size, whatever, which is right there, it's a L5. Uh, the size is a 49, that seemed to be the important number. Uh, it's a 49X, and then you can see the rest of it there uh, is H8, I don't know what that is. Um, but the what you see right under there is important information. You got your cold crank amp at zero degrees Fahrenheit is 900. Um, that's kind of an important number because that means that your peak crank amp is going to be basically double that, which is 1800. And like I said a minute ago, from what I could read online, you needed at least 1700 to get this thing to turn over. So in the cold at zero degrees, we should have enough juice. So it's got enough juice. It's the right shape and size. I put the two of them right next to each other. They're basically the same uh, design or style or shaping uh, on the outside of the battery. So all of the little lips in the bottom, because there's a bunch of parts that stick out on the bottom, little lips uh, to hold it in place. And so when you put it in place, you know, you've got this, this thing on the end here, which you got to pull out. Um, you know, that's, just, that's after you get through, you know, pulling, pulling off this thing, which requires a T25 torque and then pulling off the face plate that goes over the top, which is sitting right over there, uh, which requires a T30. And then uh, after that, let's see, what did we need? A 10 millimeter to uh, get these little ones off. And of course, I always start with the negative, then go to the positive. Uh, and I ran into a little problem, so I ended up by taking the other one off as well, which was, uh, I forget which size, I think it was slightly bigger. I think it was like a 12, 13, something like that. Uh, 13, yeah, sorry, 13 millimeter for the slightly bigger one, which was getting in the way. Uh, you don't have to take the whole thing apart. I mean, if you can do it in one shot with a 10 millimeter, great, more power to you. I had a little difficulty. Uh, anyway, so I uh, got that off, uh, pulled out the restraining thing. So basically, it, it slides in like that when you're putting it back in. So when you're pulling it out, right, you pull out, you have to unscrew this stuff which is a I don't know what size was that 10 mil okay so these are 10 mil right so I got the drill gun with the long extender and a 10 mil on the end there right and then so that's how I got those out uh, and so once you pull this up and out and uh, you pull the vent tube out of the way then you just slide the whole battery to the left and then up and then that just pulls the whole thing out, no problem. So when you're putting it back in, you, know, you kind of put it in, put it to the right, and then just set it down and it's in place. And then you put this back in on the side and just drill those back into place. Be careful not to strip them. And uh, then put everything back together. And I'll post up something else to show how successful this was or not successful if I run into any problems. The problem that I'm running into right now was in regards to the vent because this is a lead acid battery which requires a vent on the side. And I wasn't sure if I needed to do anything. I don't. I just to pop that in. Um, there's no lid on them. So be careful not to turn them upside down or sideways. They will probably leak. Um, 
So yeah, don't do that. Uh, yep, and then just pop that in and it should be good. All right, I will uh, post up in a second as to whether this worked or not. My understanding is that there may be some code issues once I plug everything back in and try and turn it on. So we'll see how that goes. All right, see you in a minute.